Okay, so this is a ball joint press kit, and I uh, rented it from, uh, where did I go? Oh, AutoZone. I, I rented it from AutoZone. They, they require that you put a $100 deposit on it, and if you don't return it, you basically own it for 100 bucks. but I'm going to return and get my deposit back. But as you can see, there's a series of plates and tubes and then a giant C-clamp. Uh, I'm going to stack these uh, plates and tubes up on that on the top of that uh, ball joint and then uh, turn the C-clamp and ex uh, press the ball joint out. Okay, so um, I've put the uh, ball joint kit on and as you can see uh, there's a plate and it's pressing up against the bottom of the ball joint. This is the top of the axle. This is a tube and this is another plate. And then when I turn this handle, which is actually this handle which is attached to the screw, what this does is it closes the it closes the distance between the between the top and the bottom, and that actually presses because of the way the plates are stacked. It presses that ball joint up and out of the hole. So I'm going to apply some pressure here and and see if this works. Okay, so um, I've put the uh, ball joint kit on, and as you can see, uh, there's a plate, and it's pressing up against the bottom of the ball joint. This is the top of the axle. This is a tube, and this is another plate. And then when I turn this handle, which is actually this handle, which is attached to the screw, what this does is it closes the it closes the distance between the between the top and the bottom, and that actually presses because of the way the plates are stacked. It presses that ball joint up and out of the hole. So I'm going to apply some pressure here and and see if this works. Okay, so that worked just fine. Not any problems. That's the ball joint. Um, that's the top of the axle, and now I can. And now I can set up for that second ball joint, which is covered by grime. But you can see it right there. It's on the top of that, uh, uh, the bottom half of that axle and uh, that bottom ball joint. I'll, I'll set up another stack and we'll extract that. Okay, so I put the clamp on. Um, the thing you should know is there used to be a Zerk fitting on the top of that, uh, on the top of that bottom uh, uh, ball joint. And I've removed the Zerk fitting so that I can uh, basically crank the the end of that screw all the way down to the top of the ball joint and then I've got a tube underneath and an adapter and and that bottom uh, shank of that ball joint is passing through the holes in the in uh, the adapter and the bottom of the C-clamp so when I apply pressure up here when I turn this thing it should press the bottom it should press that bottom ball joint out of the out of the lower axle so so just so we have this straight the ball joint on the bottom gets pressed out the bottom the ball joint on the top gets pressed out the top. All right, so it worked. I pressed it through the bottom, and man, I was using a cheater bar, and uh, it really likes to let go in a hurry. I mean, it it was resistant. I was probably putting about 100, 150 pounds of pressure on it, and all of a sudden, bang, and it just popped right out. Um, it didn't pop all the way out. I still had to give it a couple more turns to, to get it to press out the rest of the way, but it was in there good. But now it's out. I'll disassemble it, and then, and then I will clean up uh, the lower and uh, the upper uh, spots on the axles so that there's no grime or grit in there when I when I put the new ball joints in. All right. So that's a lower ball joint. I've cleaned up and wire brushed these so that they're nice and clean. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to press it back in like this. I'm going to press it up into the bottom. So. Got to stack some plates, set it up, but it should take about three minutes. Okay, I've set it up. Uh, now, when I sh this is the uh, the bottom ball joint. This is a, a tube, and this is a plate, and this is the bottom of the C clamp. Comes all the way up around to the top. Another plate up here, and when I tighten it, it'll push that ball joint up into position. So I'm going to give it the beans and. see what happens. Okay, as you can see, it's fully seated, and uh, I'm a little out of breath, and I had to make some small adjustments. The C-clamp isn't big enough, so I had to use a piece of scrap steel in order to be able to fit the whole, whole mess in there, but uh, I had to take a top plate off and get a piece of scrap steel, and, but as you can see, that worked just fine. And now the lower, ball, the lower bearing is in place. Now we can focus on the upper bearing.
All right, the top one's finally pressed in. Um, it's a little more awkward because the length of the of the uh, C clamp. Where's that C clamp? It barely fit in there, but uh, it did fit after a little bit of fiddling, and I was able to clamp it down and uh, uh, eventually uh, fully seat the upper ball joint. So now our upper and lower ball joints are fully seated. All that's left is to put the boots on and the Zerk fitting on, Zerk fittings on and then uh, reassemble everything. Steering knuckle, brake caliper, tie rod, tire. Oh, and wheel bearing hub. Anyways, uh, I'm going to fast forward a little bit here and uh, try to get everything uh, uh, more assembled before I, before I start talking again. Okay, it took a while to figure this out, but if you look at the steering knuckle, um, uh, there's a castle nut that goes on right, let's see, where am I, right here, and there's a cotter pin that will go through it, and on the bottom, there's also another big nut on the, uh, the bottom ball joint, and you're supposed to spin that, but the problem is that, uh, at first, when I was spinning that nut, it would spin the shaft of the ball joint, and there's no way to stop it from spinning. Uh, what I discovered is that in order to keep those shafts for the upper and lower ball joint from spinning when you turn the nuts on them to tighten them down to 75 and 80 pounds respectively, um, they have to be um, seated pretty well in the uh, steering knuckle. And the way that you do that is you lift it up, and then you hit it really hard on the bottom a couple of times with that three pound sledgehammer and then that will seat it and then you'll be able to tighten those nuts down without any problems uh... i'm about to go through the process now all right so we um, got everything put together on the truck um, got the uh, uh... brake disc brake caliper put on the axles put in axle nut put on uh, the end of that uh, steering rod attached and we got the wheel put on. Um, I figured you didn't want to see that. The hardest part was getting most of uh, uh, the parts off and then using the the press to actually press those joints, uh, ball joints out. But um, just in case you wanted to see it, I did have another camera going and uh, that one has the, uh, t basically it's a time lapse. Uh, so um, from where we left off, Here's the time lapse till the final assembly and putting the tire on. Hope you enjoy.